friends. Welcome to another episode of the Called Women podcast. I'm your host, Natasha Miller. And today I am so looking forward to our conversation together. I'm going to be rocking this episode solo because today is a very special day. I am going to look back on the last four to five months of the launch of this podcast. And I want to simply say thank you. Thank you to each and every one of you that has consistently listened. Thank you to those who shared, who commented, who DM'd me. This process of launching this podcast has been one of the most exhilarating, fun, and purposeful things that I've ever done in my life. And I would not be here today with you if you all had not supported me and the mission of the Called Women brand. So I just kind of want to highlight some uh, celebratory milestones that we reached in season one of the podcast. So we have reached over 6,000 plus subscribers on YouTube. Yes, 6,000. We literally started this podcast on YouTube with zero subscribers. So to know that 6,000 of you have subscribed and that you're listening to the content and that the content is impacting you and changing you is something that I'm so very proud of. We also see that a lot of your interaction has been on YouTube, that many of you all enjoy the visual aspect of the uh, podcast interviews. And I love that because I do try to put a lot of work and intentionality into the look of this show. Secondly, we have been named one of Apple's top 100 podcast shows. Yes, you heard me, top 100. We were able to do that within a week and a half of launching this uh, podcast. And again, we would not be in the top 100 if you did not subscribe, download, share, and do all of those good things. So I want to say thank you. Thank you for rallying behind us, rallying behind the mission of called women. And then lastly, we have 10,000 plus audio downloads from the Called Women podcast. That means that you all are not just listening to the episodes, but you're downloading them which means that you guys are going back and re-listening to them. You're meditating on them and you just simply want to have it in your hands so that you can listen to it whenever you want to. So again, thank you. I'm so proud of what we were able to accomplish in season one. And I am looking forward to season two. But before I go into what we have planned in season two, I kind of want to walk you through some things that I have learned, some lessons I've learned with launching the Called Women podcast. If you check out earlier in season one, I did um, a solo episode where I shared with you the four roadblocks that I had to overcome in order to answer the call of God on my life. And I shared with you those roadblocks. But today I'm going to share with you three lessons that I've learned that has helped um, motivate me and inspire me to continue to show up on this microphone every week. The first lesson that I have learned is that consistency creates momentum. I'm going to say that again. Consistency creates momentum. There's nothing like choosing to show up even when you don't feel like it. And I know for me personally, with past projects, I allowed my feelings to decide what I would do next. But with the Called Women podcast, there was this grace that the Lord really placed upon me to not just start, but to finish. And instead of rejecting that desire, instead of giving into my fears of that, you know, desire, I, in, I chose to embrace the truth that was in front of me. The truth was, was that hundreds to thousands of women were getting inspiring, encouraging, biblically based truth sent to them weekly through YouTube, through Apple, Spotify podcasts, and through email. And I realized that the more that I showed up, the more lives that were being changed and impacted. And I saw that there was this beautiful momentum that was being created, not just in my personal life, but also in the lives of women who were connected to me, which is you all. 
And I believe with all of my heart that if we choose to do hard things, and if we choose to be uh, committed to what God is asking us to do in a particular season, God is going to be faithful to show up in the areas in our life where we need him to show up in. But first we need to give him our yes. We need to make sure that we're being good stewards of what God's instruction has led us or is asking us to do. So I saw that my consistency created momentum you know, within called women, within my life, within the lives of the women that were impacted by it. So that's the first lesson that I learned in season one. The second lesson that I learned was that you have to be coachable. Being coachable is a gift. It's it's something that we all should strive to walk in and become. Because let's just be real. You cannot go through this life alone um, by yourself. You being the only person that gives yourself feedback, right? You sometimes, a lot of the times need to bring somebody else in um, so that they can give you an unbiased um, opinion or review of what you may be walking through or walking into or having a hard time navigating through. And with launching this podcast, um, I already knew that I could create safe places for women to open up. That's like a grace that the Lord has given me to truly be able to make women feel safe when they're in my presence. And then secondly, I knew that I enjoyed listening and I enjoyed uh, being able to hear stories, but I also knew that when it came to question asking, when it came to interjecting, when it came into um, really being able to know how to navigate one conversation to the next, that was something that I personally was not strong in. So um, I was able to incorporate a, a podcast coach that came in and was able to give me feedback with my question asking, um, helping me to reshape and reframe questions, um, really helping me to mold and create specifically and intentionally the type of consistent experience that I want all of my guests to have when they come on the Called Women podcast. And during those coachable moments, I had the decision to either embrace the the uh, the a review or what they saw. Um, and actually see if it's true and be open to that. Or I could simply have ignored it and got offended, right? Because it's like, hey, this is my show. I'm going to do what I want to do, blah, 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 right? But you know what? My heart did not nearly go in that direction because I knew that in order for this podcast to impact lives and in order for the Called Women brand to stay on brand, right? Because we are women of integrity, all right? I don't just preach what you know to do but I also desire to live out what I'm saying to you right so I knew that I needed to be able to receive uh you know criticism or um you know just critical questions to help get me to the place that I ultimately want to be and because of that um, I get to hear comments from, uh, you know, current listeners that were like, Natasha, I absolutely love your episodes because you actually let your guests talk. And I'm like, wow, that is true. And it really made my heart happy because, you know, when I come on these, these interviews, right? Like I really, really, really am curious about their life. I really, truly, deeply want uh, women to feel connected to certain stories and to be able to see themselves and to be able to see that what may have felt impossible in past seasons is actually possible. So be coachable, whatever season you're in, be open to uh, people coming in and giving wisdom or maybe, you know, helping you think about a certain a situation in a different way or being able to come in and kind of critique, right? Especially when you know that their intentions are pure, right? It can really, really make all the difference in your life. The next lesson that I learned was that every woman is worthy of telling their story. Every woman has a story that is worthy to be told. And of course I knew that generally speaking, right? Like, yes, we all have a story. 
but sitting here virtually and 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 having conversations with women from all different demographics and backgrounds it really really struck me to my core and it gave me language and a new level of respect and honor for every woman every woman not just women who are coming on this show but my neighbors women that i meet at the store realizing that we all are walking stories we all are walking testimonies so I was able to see that in such um, a new and vibrant and refreshing way that has really motivated me even the more to continue to search out stories that are unique, right? And that are stamped by God so that I can be able to present them to you and that you can be reminded that you're called in every season of life. Now, the top three moments of season one. There were a lot of really great moments. We've recorded 17 plus episodes, so I'm unable to go through each every one because I feel like every episode that I did, there was something special about it. But my top right now is the episode that I did with Jennifer Alwood. Okay, Jennifer Alwood. Uh, we were in the middle of our conversation. I was so focused and listening to every word that Jennifer was saying. But then my dog literally walked behind this seat right here and threw up. My dog is throwing up right next to me. In the Miller household, I do not clean up, throw up from a dog. I mean, it literally is disgusting. I will clean up my daughter's throw up, poop mistakes, whatever, like poop messes. Like I got that. But when it comes from an animal, it's just, it's just something that I just don't like to do. So literally in the middle of the recording, I'm like grossed out. My husband comes down, he's grossed out. And oh my gosh, that literally could have been a moment that, you know, could have been terrifying, right? For the wrong guests, right? If someone was just like as disgusted as me, they probably would have threw up. We would have had to reschedule the podcast, right? But Jennifer Alwood, oh my gosh, she is such a woman that is easygoing. She's fun and she is and she has a great sense of personality. And she was able to take that moment and make it into into a moment of humor right and it was just it was just one of those moments that i probably will never forget even when we're in like season 20 right it's going to be like do you remember that time courage did that so that was definitely a highlight for me and then i also enjoyed being able to see um and read how you all were able to connect with that moment. Um, on Instagram, you guys were sharing like, oh my gosh, there was a moment where my kid walked in naked into my meeting and just different stuff like that to where it's like, man, it brings it back to the reality that, hey, we all are just humans out here trying to figure it out, right? And also just understanding that we have to sometimes just go with the flow. Everything's not gonna be perfect, right? So that was one of my, one of my favorite memories. The second, um, you know, favorite memory that I have our moment was definitely the diversity of guests. And I, you know, when I first started this process, right, like I sent out texts to like, you know, uh, personal friends and, and, and people that I would love to have on the show. And some people responded and then you know, some didn't, right? So that, you know, there were moments where I was like, God, oh my gosh, am I going to have anybody? Like, how's this going to work? Because, you know, when you're starting something fresh, right, you have to build authority. You have to build brand. I mean, you, it's a lot of different things when it comes to like, you know, building something, right, that can reach, um, you know, more people. And I remember, you know, having a moment of like, God, who, who should I have on the show? And God was just so faithful in reminding me of women that I had met in past seasons and, um, you know, women that I had seen uh, on ministry trips or um, on Instagram that I was inspired by. And I was able to reach out to them, including personal friends. And they said, yes. And I just loved how the Lord orchestrated season one with bringing the right women for the time and the moment in which we needed them the most. And I loved the diversity of conversations that we had, uh, because when it comes to the called women podcast, yes, we are wanting women to share what it looks like, what it looked like uh, for them to answer the call. But we had a, we had an array of different guests who were either in the middle of figuring it out, 
either had been walking in their call for a long time, or maybe they were even in a season of transition from one assignment to the next. And I just loved how within all of the differences in their story, there was still something that was um, in unity and in unison was that they had made the decision to say yes to God, no matter what it looked like. And that was just something that I will never forget and that I will continue to hopefully carry into every season that we do this is that we really want God to be glorified. And, um, and I'm really entrusting the Lord with God, who do you want to have on the show? And honestly, y'all, like I'm doing that. I'm always looking around and um, thinking who would be great to come and bring on next. So if you have any ideas or names of women that you're like, Natasha, I think she would really be great on the show. Or if there's someone that you just simply want to see um, or have on, let me know in the comment box. My team and myself will go through there and write them down and see if we can make that happen. Now, the next highlight um, or moment, one of my you know favorite moments of season one was the streaming and uh, the uh, the live call to women masterclass. That was definitely a highlight for me. Last year, we did the call to, to women masterclass, but we did not have the podcast up and going. And so there wasn't a way for us to stream it too. Um, you know, a specific group of women who was following the called women brand. So to see um, and to watch thousands of you come on every night to pray in the morning and to hear the teachings, um, you know, and hear the teachings every day for five days, it really, really blessed my soul. Um, because I know that many of you guys are satisfied with the podcast interviews and episodes, but it did my heart good to see you guys not just getting content, but getting information that truly um, had the power to revolutionize your walk with God and your perspective of what he has for you. So that just really was a highlight for me is to, is to watch women who, may have been listening to this podcast since last year and they were introduced to the masterclass and they were blessed by it. It really, really was an amazing time. So that those are my top three moments of season one. So three things that I am excited about when it comes to season two. Well, there's a lot. Okay. But before I go into that, um, I want you to know that we are going to take a small break just to reconvene and prepare for season two. What I like to do is pre-record episodes, um, you know, before we go live and kind of have the episodes done so that we can consistently um, have them come out. Um, so we're going to take a small little break and then we're going to come back, okay, with a vengeance, all right? Because y'all, 2024 is not over. It is just beginning. Okay. And um, so with season two, I am so looking forward to having live one-on-one -on -one, uh, conversations. I am excited about being able to have a guest that I'm interviewing in the same room as me. Virtual is amazing and it's so convenient and it's just so creative. And it's just so great that we have this technology to do this. But I'm looking forward to um, not just doing virtual interviews, but also doing in person, because I believe that there's something magical that happens when two women get together in a space and intentionally listen and allow God into the conversation. So I'm looking forward to more of those. Um, I are, I've already been working on a list of local women in my community or in my, uh, you know, city area who could come on and I'm looking forward to being able to meet them in person, um, and to introduce them, you know, to you all as well. I'm also looking forward to, uh, sharing with you other ways for you to stay connected. Um, if you don't already, you want to make sure that you are a part of our email list. 
um, if you're not, a way for you to uh, sign up for that is simply going into the show notes. And then also in YouTube, under this video here, you will see a way, you'll have the, there's a link there where you can put in your information so that you can get weekly emails from us. That's the best way to stay in contact with us. If you wanna be in the know of what's happening next here in Called Women, you wanna make sure that you are plugged in, whether to our email list or our Instagram at Called Women. Uh, because we are working on a resource platform that's going to be curated specifically for the called women community. Um, I know in the past that you you should be, a, well, if you're not aware, we have a part of the called women community uh, that's called CCA. And that is, excuse me, our call coach Academy. And that's where we certified spirit field Christian life coaches. Uh, but we know that some of you guys are not ready for that step, right? But we still want to pour into you and disciple you and help you get the clarity that you need to see where God is leading you next. So we're working on that currently. And I'm looking forward to being able to talk about it in more detail and also share with you how you can be a part of it. Uh, so, so many great things are in store and I cannot wait for you to be a part of it. Um, I just want to thank you again for such an amazing season one. Uh, one thing that I'm looking forward to as well is being able to meet um, some called women who um, who are in the area. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward, you know, to meeting you guys and talking with you and hearing how these podcast episodes are ministering to your hearts. Um, so stay tuned for that. And then lastly, if you have any questions at all that you would like for me to answer, please post them in the comments. Or if you sign up for our email list, every email that's sent out on the bottom of that email, there's an opportunity for you to submit a question. I really want to begin to answer your questions and really kind of help you bring clarity um, you know, to your call or if you need a prayer or if you need, um, you know, whatever it is. I want to be able to help you get the answer that you need so that you can continue to move forward in all that God's called you to be. All right. So again, thank you guys so much for season one. I love you guys dearly. And if you haven't already, if you missed any episodes, now is the time to go back and tune in because when season two starts going, you definitely do not want to be behind. Right. So again, blessings to you guys and I'll see you in season two.